Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring and welcome to a video that I should have made over a year ago when I have received my new sim rig, back then a new sim rig. So today I will be taking you around it, showing you its specs and features before we will proceed with making actual sim racing content where I will be uh, driving, making videos, also driving with you guys, doing some TF sessions off season. So, well, without any further ado, let's proceed with showing you around its specs and features. We start actually not with the sim rig itself, but with the essential, the actual rig or the processor behind it, because I use it also as my editing rig, sim rig, it's all rig, so it doesn't matter. I think many of you gaming nerds and also sim racing nerds will find it interesting to find out the specs behind it. This has been actually featured on their Bauer channel, German YouTuber who's making lots of overclocking and PC and case modding stuff. Roman is his name. Thank you very much for helping me customize and most importantly also to build this computer. I got it in last year, January, so almost a year ago exactly. So let me walk you quickly through the specs. The case is Corsair 5000 series. The processor is very important. It's AMD Ryzen 5950X. 5950X, whatever, however you want to call it. Video card, NVIDIA GTX 3090. Don't ask me how we managed to get it back then, and I think even still today, they are pretty scarce. Thank you very much, all the crypto world, for making it come this far. 128 gigs of RAM. It's many gonna say overkill, but I think the whole rig is overkill, but on the other hand, it's probably not overkill, uh, overkill for all the applications that I'm using it for, because mainly shooting and editing videos and also sim racing at the same time. And moreover, we have the all-in-one water-cooled system. So it's uh, the video card is water-cooled, the processor, and yeah, I think that is pretty much it when it comes to the most important components. So now let's take a look at the actual sim rig. Yeah, I know, I have to do something about the cable management. All right, one more thing I want to show you is my battle station when it comes to editing. Odyssey G9 screen with SteelSeries keyboard, uh, Logitech mouse, also forgot which one it is. Oh no, MX Master 3. All right, always be aware of what kind of gear you're running. All the gear and no clue, that's what we're doing. Razer Nomo Pro sound system, and here the Logitech webcam that I'll be probably using for streaming the sim content that we'll be doing later on. And now let's proceed to the actual sim rig. And here is the main subject of our today's video, my sim rig, built by SimTag. You may also know the man behind SimTag. He's also responsible for Sky Limit events, Andy. So big thank you to him and his crew for building and specking all of this. So let's go over the specs. The frame is by SimTech, it's their own custom frame. And when we were building and configuring it, Janusz, the main guy behind SimTech together with Andy, he said like, hey, which color would you like? Can you do something, do you want something crazy? I'm like, maybe martini colors? Like, do you do even crazier? Think outside the box. I'm like, hmm, grello would be nice. And then we actually specced it to be like a full grello spec. And then I was thinking like, yeah, imagine having it like a full bright green and yellow sim here in my office space and maybe at some point I would like to move it. Yeah, the sim expo, it would be awesome, but I think subtle black was a better choice with some white and red details. Now, that's when it comes to the frame. We have also the triple monitor st stand there that we will show it to you in a bit, but we moved the sim a bit more here so we can show it to you more in detail. Sparco Evo L racing seat. Somewhere here we have a sticker saying, do not use for race, but only for sim racing. I'm pretty sure someone would put it in their car, definitely outside of Germany. Uh, that's when it comes to the seat. Now, one of the most important components, let's proceed immediately with it, is Simicube 2 Ultimate Direct Drive System. Many of you may ask the question, why not Fanatec? because I had it specced by SimTech and they deal with SimiCube. And back then I had absolutely zero idea of components and sim racing and with the level of driving or knowledge, for me, it wouldn't matter whether it was like a base station, but I wanted to go for the best, as you can also see with my editing rig, because I want the hardware to last for many years and I also don't mind to be paying for the quality. 
I can tell you that this transcends the feel of like real steering feel from the car as if it is in real life. So I'm extremely happy with that particular direct drive system. Again, I'm not that much into sim racing when it comes to all the processing filters and all the extra hardware specs, but you can check it out all on their website to find out more about it, but I am absolutely loving it. We have Asher Racing pedal shifts and the buttons control together with Porsche Club Sport steering wheel, which is kind of funny because again, you might ask the question, why such a simple steering wheel? And here comes the paradox of me saying like, yeah, I don't know if I want to have such a crazy steering wheel if I'm gonna use it. But on the other hand, I have such a crazy direct drive system and pedals, which is also probably my favorite feature of the sim. But before we're gonna go to that, we have also your precision uh, sim engineering uh, screen that I actually still have the plastic foil on it and we should probably take it off. Uh, SimTech also equipped it with a hydraulic handbrake, very nice system, but to be honest, I have never used it like in the whole year. We have Stream Deck here that I also have never used it, but uh, hopefully we will use it soon enough once we will start streaming. And actually over here, I have a Vive Pro, HTC Vive Pro that I bought like last week. And now a question to you guys, because I have tried to connect it and it works when I'm standing inside the living room, but once I sit in the sim, somewhere near the sim vicinity, it loses connection with the tracker, with the base station. And I try to put base stations everywhere, every single corner of the room. Once I get to the sim, done, it loses tracking. So I don't know if the, I asked Jamie Broadband and he said like, maybe there's like uh, electromagnetic interference or something. <sighs> I don't know, maybe you have experience with it. I'm gonna try to work it out, but I had just no time. I was struggling with it for two hours and it was quite upsetting. Uh, moreover, some other important things, uh, Steel Series wireless headset, um, the gloves that were given to me by Jochen from Schnelle Schwaben Track Day. Really like those, so I'm using the, these for sim, uh, dedicated for sim racing. Racing shoes, um, Alpine Stars, I forgot the exact name. Oh, there we go, 1Z. So it's not 1JZ, it's just 1Z, made in Croatia, by the way. Very cool. And yeah, I guess now it's uh, time to show you the pinnacle of the actual sim rig. It's also, I think, the most expensive component of the whole rig, the paddles, made by SimTech themselves. It's their SimTech Ultimate Black Edition pedal set, which is based on the actual race car pedal set by Tilton 600, full hydraulic spec. There is, like, it is, for me, probably the best sim racing pedal out there. Again, you might say you, I don't have much experience, but whenever I get out of this sim rig into any others on any sim expo or somewhere else with friends that have also professional pedals, it comes nothing close to the pedal feel of this one. And I know for a fact that many professional drivers, including current World Formula One champion, Max Verstappen, has exactly that pedal set because you can transcend or generate actually the type of feel from an actual race car, the, the amount of brake pedal, pedal force that you can use with that. And when I'm going to the gym actually, I noticing that my left foot uh, leg actually is a lot stronger on a leg day because of the amount of brake force I need to apply to use braking in the sim rig. So I think that's pretty much it when it comes to all the specs. Um, yeah, maybe I can show you also obviously the monitor that I'm using. So the monitor is another Odyssey G9, but I think previous generation that the one that I'm using for editing. And when I was configurating or specking the sim rig, there was also obviously the question is, do you want to have a triple monitor stand or a single one? And again comes the paradox. I said like, yeah, I don't know if I want triple, if I want to spend much space or maybe money for a triple setup, I think a single one will be sufficient. And to be honest, a single stand is definitely for me sufficient. I'm not complaining about it, but I do see advantages of having actually triple screen setup. And maybe this is something that I will go later in the future. This monitor stand is also by SimTag themselves. And actually latest upgrade is here for additional screen that I have purchased recently. You can see it here, it's still in the box because it came, well, like this, but it has no screws to attach it to the top. So what I'll be doing is I'll be using this screen to uh, monitor or all, all the chats, etc., that will come on the stream. Yeah, stream, screen, etc., etc. 
So I think that's pretty much it when it comes to, uh, yeah, to, to the actual specs. All I want to say to you, uh, let me know what kind of content you would like to see when it comes to sim racing. Of course, I will do lots of comparisons of uh, real sim uh, or like real track versus sims, what kinds of sims I love running the most, I can tell you quickly right now. My favorite, uh, just to jump into it and go for it, is a Santa Corsa, without a doubt, because it's just easy, you can hop in and drive. I also do iRacing, but it's, yeah, there's a lot of, like, it takes too long, and I'm quite often short on time, you start it up, it says, oh, you need to download all these updates, and yada, yada, and then it takes quite a time to, to start it up, and I get frustrated, so... Assetto Corsa is definitely the one that I also use the most to practice and recently I started doing Assetto Corsa Competizione, especially with a 1.4 update. I don't like GP racing, you all know that, I just li like the Nordschleife, but I wanted to give it a try still, especially after this 1.8 update. And when it comes to physics and realism, it is the most realistic thing that I have experienced when it comes to comparison of sim driving versus real life. So whenever, if, at some point, hopefully, a set of Corsa 2 is going to come out with Nordschleife, or maybe they're going to make some Nordschleife a mod for Competizione, who knows, then that will be definitely, for me, the to-go to platform. But that's pretty much it. I'm looking forward to reading your comments, questions, suggestions, etc. Whether you do any sim racing, what types of setup you're running, if you have any tips and hints, and um, yeah, thanks for watching, and hope you guys enjoy this video. And see you soon in one of the live streams. Bye-bye.